Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about how to approximate the solutions of a nonlinear system. So in this video we're going to look at a quadratic equation and an exponential equation, or a quadratic function and an exponential function. It says we want to approximate the solution or solutions of the system to the nearest thousandth. So we're going to get our answer to the nearest thousandth, so the three decimal places. Now, we could type this in in our calculator, in our TI-84 plus CE graphing calculator, find the intersection, and be done very quickly. But we're gonna kinda go through the steps of how could we do this without our calculator, without graphing it on the calculator, and what we're kind of looking for with our X and Y values here. So we're gonna start off by just graphing both of these functions. So I'm gonna start with my quadratic, and I'm gonna start by finding the axis of symmetry. So I'm gonna say X is equal to opposite of B over 2A, and that's going to give us x equals 2 over 2 times 1. And that'll give us x equals 1. So now I can graph that as my vertical dashed line. And that is my axis of symmetry. So now I'm going to take that value 1, plug it back in to find where my vertex would be located. So I'm going to say y equals 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 5. And that's going to give me... 1 minus 2 minus 5, and 1 minus 2 would be negative 1, minus 5 would be negative 6. So my vertex is 1, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and negative 6. Now my y-intercept is located at negative 5, and I can reflect a point over the axis of symmetry. Now let's plug in a couple values, maybe when x is 3, let's see, x is 4 and x is 5, so that we can add some points to our parabola. So 1, 2, 3. So let's figure out what is y when x is 3 in our quadratic. So this is going to give us 9 minus 6 minus 5. So this would be 3 minus 5, so negative 2. So we have a point at 1, 2, 3, negative 2. And then we can reflect that point over our axis of symmetry. And let's do that one more time for when x is 4, just so we can get a clearer picture of what our parabola looks like. So 16 minus 8 minus 5, and that's going to give me 3. So we have a point at 4, 1, 2, 3, and we can reflect that point over right there. So now let's draw our parabola. All right, so there's our parabola. And let me adjust it so that it fits our points a little bit better. All right, that's pretty good. Okay, so now I'm going to take away this axis of symmetry just so it's not confusing for us. And let's go ahead and graph our exponential function. So for our exponential, we're looking at y equals 2 to the x power plus 1. The quickest and easy way, easiest way to graph this with some points is probably just to plug in some values for x and see what we get. So let's say uh, 2 to the 0 power plus 1. So anything to the 0 power is 1, and 1 plus 1 would be 2. So that means we have a point at 0, 2. And let's do 2 to the first power. That would give us 3. So when x is 1, y is 3. And let's do 2 squared. So that would be 5. So when x is 2, y is 3, 4, 5. And now let's do a couple going the other way. So let's do when x is negative 1. So 2 to the negative first would be 1 over 2, which is 1 half. And plus 1 would be 1 and a half, or 1.5. Okay, so somewhere right in there. And let's do one more when x is negative 2. So this would be 1 over 2 squared, so 1 over 4, 0 0.25 plus 1, so 1 1.25. So that gives us a little clearer picture of what our exponential function should look like. And there we go. So now what we see is we have our intersection right here. Okay. So now, obviously, we can't tell exactly where that's located because it's not on a nice intersection of our grid lines. But we can tell that it's between negative 2 and negative 1. And so now what we can do is plug in some values into this function to figure out how we could approximate it. So kind of the first thing that we could do is take our two expressions, x squared minus 2x minus 5, and set that equal to 2 to the x plus 1. And we can rewrite these two equations as one function since they're both equal to y. So now what we're going to do is basically move all of these terms of our quadratic over to the right side so that we can set this equal to 0 and then make it set it equal to f of x so we can write it as a function. So now we're going to say f of x is equal to 
And now we're gonna write this as two to the x minus x squared plus two x. And we can combine one and five and write it as plus six. Okay, so now we're gonna take this function. So f of x equals two to the x minus x squared plus two x plus six. And we're gonna plug in some values here. We know that our solution is somewhere between negative two and negative one. And it looks like it's closer to negative two. Right, so let's start by plugging in negative 1.9 and let's see what we get for our solution. So I'm gonna write this one time and then from there on out when we plug in a different value for x, I'm not gonna rewrite the entire equation because it is rather lengthy. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna write two to the negative 1.9 power minus negative 1.9 squared plus two times negative 1.9 plus six. So I have this on my, on my calculator on my computer because it's very easy to, to plug in, so I'll put that on the screen right now. And we can look, and when we plug this in, we get an answer of, let's say, negative 1.14, okay? So now let's keep going because what we're looking for is a change in sign because once we go from a positive to a negative, zero lies between there, okay? And that's what we're looking for, the zero. And so now we're gonna say f of negative 1.8. Okay, so we go to our computer, and we can do this on our graphing calculator, but it's just a little bit easier to do it on the computer. We can do it rather quickly. And so here we do that and we get negative 0.55. So we still haven't found our change in sign yet. So now let's plug in negative 1.7 and see if we can get a positive value. Because once we get a positive value, that's where our zero is gonna lie between and look what happens. We get 0.02. So now, since we have this change in sign, our zero lies in between there. Okay, now what we're gonna do is take a look and say, okay, which one, is, which one of those is closer to zero? The f of negative 1.7 or negative 1.8? And that's gonna be negative 1.7 because that's 0 0.02. So we're gonna take 0 0.02 or we're gonna take f of negative 1.7 and we are going to decrease our guess a little bit so that we can get closer to zero or we can get back to a negative and so we can break it down by the thousandth and get even closer to our possible answer. So the first thing I'm gonna do is plug in the f of negative 1.701. And the reason why I did 7.01 is because we're trying to read, write our answer to the nearest thousandth. And so negative 1.700, so the one higher than that in the thousandth place would be negative 7 point, negative 1.701. So now in my calculator, we're gonna do negative 1.701 and see what we get. Okay, so here we still have a positive answer, 0.01. So now we're going to decrease a little bit more and go negative 1.702 and see what we get. So we plug that in, negative 1.702, and we still have a positive value, 0.0. .0 zero six five okay so now let's go to negative one point seven zero three and let's plug that in and see what we get negative one point seven zero three and we have zero point zero 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 nine okay still not still don't have a negative right so let's do one point seven zero four and see what we get and hopefully we're going to get our a negative term here because negative 1.703 was really, really close to zero. And we do see a negative. So negative 0.004. And so now here was our change in sign, okay? And since we were approximating to the nearest thousandth, we can just pick one of these two. Which one is closer to zero? And that would be the F of negative 1.703. So now that is our x value of our intersection, negative 1.703, that's our x value. So now all we do to find our y value is take negative 1.703 and plug it back into for x in either one of these original equations. Now I'm going to do the exponential because there's only one x there. So we're gonna do y equals two to the x plus one and we're gonna plug in negative 1.703 for x, okay? So now if we do that in our calculator, we have negative, let's erase this, 
and negative 1.703 and plus one. And so this gives us y is equal to 1.307. And now that is our y value, okay? And so it's a rather lengthy process, a lot of calculating involved, but that is how you approximate the solution of a nonlinear system involving a quadratic and an exponential function.